What's going on guys, it's Ness nice bringing you guys my standard Nightblade build from Morrowind. I've been playing Nightblade here and there a bit more often because I wanted something different. I want to take a step away from Magic DK just for a little bit, just to play other things and get a, you know, some fresh air, things like that. Don't worry, I'll still be playing Magic DK. Magic DK videos will still be coming out. I'll still be playing Magic DK. I posted one Nightblade video and everybody's like, where's Magic DK? So I was like, I'll still be posting Magic DK. I'll post a build video as soon as I figure out when I exactly like, I have a lot of different setups that I've tried so far this patch that are like okay, but I'm still looking to nail down something that perfectly fits my playstyle personally. So, as soon as I figure that out, I will be coming out with that. I still do have a ton of old clips that I still will be posting. Um, I do have a lot more than I thought I did, and then I have a ton of new clips. So I'm PVP funds should be coming out a lot more often. Hopefully, I'll try and edit get them uh, edited a bit faster and things like that but to get into the nightblade build video get into the raw stats first off this is a proc blade hate me for it do whatever I, I don't care really um just anymore you really are gimping yourself if you don't play a proc blade i played a regular nightblade build and it was a regular nightblade build um the only difference between a proc blade and a regular nightblade build is you can heal yourself on a regular nightblade but a night regular nightblade won't have like anywhere close to as much damage as this so and proc blade it fits my playstyle a lot more because you run a lot higher regen so you can basically do whatever you want which is really what i want to do i want to be able to roll as much as i want i want to be able to cloak and shade as much as i want that's how i play nightblade i play nightblade very evasive very like you know all over the place get up in get up out things like that so Raw stats, 10k magicka, 22k health. We want at least 22k health, that's the raw I shoot for. Um, I'll show some different setups. I do have higher health with different setups because I run like more triglyphs or anything like that. But on this, my, on my personal favorite setup, that's how much health I have on this. Just on a 30k stamina, kind of cringy, but it doesn't matter because again, proc blade. A uh, thousand magicka recovery unbuffed, that can get a lot higher with a lot of different things I'll get into later in the build video. 3400 stamina recovery, that can get a lot higher also with other things I'll get into later. 1500 weapon damage unbuffed on the back bar, it doesn't matter because we are a proc blade. Weapon crit, again, doesn't matter because we are a proc blade. You can see the unbuffed resistance is there. We are running a defending bow on the back bar, so a little bit higher. When you do cloak, it's about 21, 22k resistance. And then almost 2200 crit resist, which is really good because we're in too well fitted. And 5 in pen, so pretty nice there. 64 stamina, jewels of misrule on the food. Now, personally, I'd either use the jewels of misrule or the gold food from Orsinium. It's up to you. Um, if you can afford the gold food 24 7, I would definitely go with the gold food. It's definitely better. You get more health, you get more health recovery. The health recovery is really going to help you out because your healing isn't so great. So, to have something naturally like giving you back more health recovery is going to be really nice. Um, Serpent Mundus, nothing beats the Serpent Mundus, especially on this build, you're stacking recovery. Um, weapon damage isn't worth it, crit isn't worth it, crit damage isn't worth it. The only other thing I would possibly go for is the Atro. So, but that's about it. It's up to you. Um, you can play with the magic and stamina recovery. I mess around with it here and there still, but for the most part, I like it where it sits right now. Um, I'm a werewolf. I run that on the back bar, so to get the more stamina recovery. I haven't played as a vampire on this, but personally, um, just the way damages and things are now, and you are pretty squishy, I would not chance going vampire, personally. I would run werewolf for sure. Um, and then you can already see a set we're wearing. I'll get into that in a minute. So, first and foremost, obviously Viper. When it comes to proc sets, nothing really beats Viper, especially on a Nightblade. Um, so you can see it there. Everybody should know what Viper is for the most part. Crit, max dam, crit. Every four seconds when you deal damage, it's going to deal um, 8.5k unbuffed. When you buff up, it's like 10 11k. So, basically... It's around the 4 to 5k free damage. Then we're running an Oblivion Damage Glyph. Most people should know what Oblivion Damage Glyph is. It's been a lot of builds. A lot of people have been out and around with it. It's basically like another Viper proc. Um, it's unmitigated damage. You cannot block it. It goes through shields. It, it basically just doesn't give a fuck. So Oblivion is going to go through everything. And then it can crit. So it'll end up basically hitting almost as hard as Viper. I've had Oblivion Glyphs hit players for like 4k. 
So what you'll basically do is hit people with like 2k light attacks conservatively, like a 3-4k surprise stack conservatively, and then a 5k viper and a 4k oblivion. So a light attack surprise attack bash can turn into something real quick. And that's just why proc blade is so good. Because if you run a normal night blade build, sure you can hit somebody with like a 4k light attack and a 7k surprise attack, but proc blade does all that damage with an oblivion glyph and a viper proc so kind of outweighs um and then back bar is cowards personally i prefer this set over everything else i'll get into the other sets i've tried out in a second but just to show you cowards those of you who don't know it max health really good for this obviously because we could use more health stand recover stand recover stacking regen like we need it and then while sprinting you gain major expedition and major protection Personally, I like this a lot better than anything else because it removes the need to roll to get major expedition. So instead of rolling to get hasty retreat, you just sprint. And it doesn't matter. And it's a lot better for getting away. Like, if you're getting chased by a Zerg and you have to run, roll, run, roll, like, you're wasting so much stamina doing that. So if you wear cowards, all you have to do is sprint. And if you get snared, or you get CC'd, you just shuffle, and then go, and you're good to go. And you're taking 30% less damage while you're doing that. Obviously, that's a big help, because we're a medium armor nightblade without a ton of healing. So, it's going to get you away, and then any damage you may take while you are getting away is going to be reduced by, obviously, a lot. So, that is my preferred second set. I'll get into the layout after I show you the other sets I've tried out. So to show you the other sets, um, obviously ran normal Nightblade builds, so Maelstrom Bows. Um, Eternal Hunt, that's obviously the main build that a lot of people have put out, that a lot of people are running, that's, you know, just a normal go-to setup. And Eternal Hunt is really good, and I really like it. But personally, if you have a lot of people on you, I mean a lot, it's, it's not really going to help you. Eternal Hunt is very good in... 1v1 in small scale in bgs and things like that but personally for open world i just like coward so much better because it removes the having to roll it gives you damage reduction um obviously eternal hunt would give you a little bit more max stam doesn't really matter though because prog blade but that rune it's just not gonna help you when you do have a zerg on you that's my only thing um next up willow's path i've tried willow's path actually it's really good but the thing is, it's it's just too good. Um, believe it or not, it's almost unnecessary. Basically, what I wanted to do with the back bar set was, with your monster set and with Viper, you get all the damage you need. So, on the back bar set, I just wanted something for either recovery, sustain, some type of support utility. So I was basically just going out all those routes. And with Willows, it's really nice. It kicks your recovery into retarded but that's the thing it's like you will never run out especially like when you swap to your bow bar is your kiting bar is like you're taking damage you need to cloak things like that you're like you will not run out of any resource when you are on your bow bar with five willows up but the thing is it's just it's too much it's not necessary same thing with shadow walker um shadow walker is a really good set personally i don't like the one weapon damage in it because it's not very useful but besides that it's just overkill um, basically, like, if you do the math behind it, if I put that on right now, I'd kind of just, you know, rough number, I'd be like 8k stamina recovery. If I pop Relentless and I put that on and I go in Cloak, I'd be at 8k stamina recovery standing still. And it's just, the health return, really nice, but the stamina, unnecessary, and it's, it's something to get used to. Obviously, you have to get used to cowards because most people with two Asian bow builds will like know to roll to get hasty retreat to get away and get your major expedition and things like that. But to like have to stand still, it's I don't know. It's quite annoying, especially for me. I just play so evasive and mobile, especially on Nightblade, that I don't know. It's hard. Like you can break away and then cloak and just stand somewhere for a second. But like I said, I don't feel like the recovery is needed. And then last but not least, and people are going to hate me for this, but to be honest, as an option, Shieldbreaker. Why why am I that guy? Because it's the one thing that the build suffers at. I'm going to keep this short and simple, not to trigger too many people. But 
That's the one thing the build will suffer at, is shield users. You'll get them really low, and then they'll clap their hands, and then fight reset. Um, so, to negate that happening ever, basically, like I said, you will burst people down to like 2k health, they'll clap their hands. Well, if you burst them down to 2k health, they clap their hands. Most swords, literally, they just won't heal themselves. So, all you gotta do is switch bars and light attack them. Just throwing that out there, it's an option. You can throw the salt in the comments. Go ahead, as Just throwing it out there. Um, a couple of the things I've tried. I've tried out Daedric Trickery. I don't have it on me. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, basically it gives you... It's like Lich. Um, kind of. It'll give you a random major buff, either Expedition, Protection, Vitality, Mending, or Heroism. So, basically, like, either a lot of healing, a lot of old move speed, or a lot of damage reduction. But the thing is, you can't backbar it like Lich. Um, if you, you have to have the five-piece constant, which really sucks, because I would really run that. Because the old gen, really nice. Major Expedition, really nice. Damage reduction, it would be, like, every set that I would like comboed in one, but unfortunately it doesn't work. But, uh, yeah, that's about it for backbar sets. Um... And then I do use the drain poisons. Obviously, you don't have to use poisons if you don't want to. You can use an oblivion glyph on your bow. You can use whatever glyph on your bow you want. Um, you can use cost increase. I have my cost increase in the bank. Um, personally, I'm just going with magic cost increase now, just because everybody does rely on magic cost increase some way, shape, or form. This build, personally, you're cloaking. You're shading. Like, you're doing... You need magicka. Everybody needs magicka. So you're better off going with that, personally. And then it's going to last for like 11 seconds, which is longer than the cooldown. So, yeah, it's personally why I go for that. <clears throat> and then the monster set. For the most part, Selene. Um, I haven't tried out Veladress in a while, but Selene, just the way it is, just the way the cooldown works, it just fits so well with Nightblade, personally, that I don't even feel like I have to try Veladress. And it's single target versus, like, AoE. So, yeah. Obviously, if you don't know what Selene is, you can see right there. Um, basically, when you deal any direct damage, so basically anything a Nightblade does, it's going to spawn a bear. The bear is going to hit the player. It can occur every five seconds. Another thing that lines up directly with Viper, so you can see where this is going. Obviously, just, you know, procs on procs. And then the thing is, just to show everybody why weapon damage is 100% useless. You saw right there at tooltip for 16.5k. <clears throat> That's why weapon damage is useless. It tooltips for 19.2k. And I have 2k weapon damage. I mean, if I go cloak, 2.2. But... You get where I'm going with this. So that's why you just fully invest in regen. Um, and I run one triglyph, everything else is max stamina. And then obviously you can see I run the four cowards on the body. So belt, legs, feet, chest cowards, monster set, obviously. The viper, one on the body, three jewelry, all stam wreck, and then the sword. And then I do run the two well fitted. Everything else is impen, so see that there. Personally, I feel like this is the best layout. I do like rolling a lot. I do like sprinting a lot. Obviously, with something like Cowards. So, I do feel like this is a good layout. As long as you're at like 1900, 2k crit resist, and you are playing like very evasive, you really won't need any extra impen. Get into the skills really quick. It should be the pretty standard Nightblade bar to everybody. Um, surprise, Fear, Rally, Ambush, Executioner, Incap. So, big damage ulti. Executioner, Execute, Ambush, Gap, Close, and Power, Rally, Heal Over Time, Major Brutality, Burst Heal, um, Mass Hysterias, Fear, CC, Get People Off You, um, it's going to snare them and then give them, um, reduce their damage towards you by 15% for a little bit, and Surprise Attack, obviously main DPS, it's going to give you Major Fracture, and then if you do it from Stealth, it's going to stun people. I'd like to do that a lot, especially with the procs, to be honest, it is pretty cheesy, you will come out of Stealth, so... You just walk in, somebody cloak up, don't do anything, just surprise attack, or light attack, surprise attack, really quick. Sometimes it's iffy, um, if you do hit somebody with, like, a light attack or something before the surprise attack, it won't stun them sometimes, 
I haven't played Nightblade in a while personally, so I don't know if that's like intended or not, but just to be safe, just surprise attack. Leave out the light attack and you will stun them, and then obviously coming from stealth you're gonna have more damage, your proc sets are gonna proc. Basically just gonna gank people like that. Uh, next up, Relentless Focus. Uh, Minor Berserk, increase your damage by 8%. Increase your stamina recovery by 10%. And it gives you the bow proc. Personally, I don't use it for the bow proc. It doesn't deal a whole lot of damage on this build. Next up, Shadow Image. Use this to kite. You can switch this out for other things. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know how Shadow Image works, basically, if I'm targeting this NPC right here, I would put it down. And when I put it down, it would be standing right here. It would be standing right next to me. If I run over here, and I click the ability again, it would teleport me back. So it's really good for kiting. It, you can use it through multiple levels. So if I did put it up here and then I ran down there, I'd be able to hit it and it would teleport me back up here. So you can do it like that. You can throw on a keep wall. You can jump down and go try and gank some people or things like that. You can use it to do shady things. Obviously, shadow image. No pun intended. Cringe. Uh, next but not, uh, this vigor, obviously. So. Obviously, just another heal over time, just another heal for yourself. If you are taking damage, hit this. You want to try and hit this, like, keep it up 100% of the time if you can. If you're in a fight, like, treat it as, like, another buff. So, you want to keep up Rally, you want to keep up Relentless, you want to keep up Shuffle, next ability I'll get into. Then you want to keep up Vigor. Just, if you're going into a fight, have that healing going. So, if you do take damage, it's already kicking your health back up. Especially on this build, like, you are squishy. You don't have a ton of healing, so you do want to have all healing at all times, preferably. Uh, next up is Shuffle, obviously, major evasion, so it's going to give you dash chance for 23 seconds. And then it removes snares and immobilization, so you can't get rooted, and you can't get snared when you hit this. And we are in 7 medium, so it's going to last 3.5 seconds. Obviously, pretty nice. So if you do get talents or anything like that, you do want to have Shuffle. And if you do get CC'd because of CP passive, you get Unchained, you want to cast Shuffle because, as you can see, it does cost quite a bit. So with Unchained, when you do break a CC, this is going to cost 80% less. So either you do want to cast Shuffle or you want to cast Vigor because they are your two most costly abilities. Obviously, just treat it on what you need. If you need healing right then and there, cast Vigor. If you're just in a root, if you're just getting crowd controlled really heavy, hit Shuffle and get out of there. And then Cloak, everybody should basically know what Cloak is, bread and butter of a Nightblade. You hit Cloak, nobody can see you, you're in stealth. Um, because it is a shadow ability, if we read down here, you get your major resolve and ward. So, gonna put your resistances a little bit higher. You can see right there. Gonna make you a little bit tankier. So, obviously, use that, Cloak around, use this for evasive, things like that. And for the ulti, I just slot Werewolf for the region. Other things you could do, you could do Tether. Personally, I don't like Tether that much anymore. You could use the bolt ulti, throw it down. Um, besides that, there's nothing I personally like. Um, you could even do something like Meteor. Um, you could use Barrier because of the passive for 10% more magic recovery. So you could put that on, get a little bit more magic recovery instead of stamina recovery. It's purely up to you. Um, you could do Meteor for AoE, but that would be about it. There's not so many options I would personally put there. Getting the CP, trying to get through this pretty quick. 37 Warlord, 13 Sprinter, 56 Arcanist, 64 Mooncalf, 40 Tumbling, 65 Mighty, 20 Piercing, 44 Precise Strikes, 81 Master at Arms. I run a lot in there because obviously a lot of your stuff is direct damage. And personally, there's not a whole lot else you want to go to and still does scale fairly well like once you get to 23 24 percent that's when obviously it's going to cost a lot more like if i put 19 more in here i'm only going to get 90 percent 90 percent more so it's not worth it obviously and there's nothing else you would invest it into so in my opinion you might as well do master at arms it's going to buff all your proc sets also so um 33 resistant 44 ironclad 65 65 hardy and ellie Three thick skinned, and that's it for CP. Give you guys one last look at the character sheet. Both bars. And then I'll buff really quick. You 
you see the insane recovery in the back bar. And obviously if you do get a two-hander kill, if you do get continuous attack, if you get continuous or a two-hander kill, that's going to be buffed by 30%. So if you get continuous, that's going to be buffed by 10%. There's a lot of other ways you can buff your recoveries and they can get pretty obscene and pretty high. Oh, one last look at all the gear, three stamina recovery on the Viper Jewelry, then on the body, all max stamina, five impen, two well fitted, doesn't matter what you have it on, um, and then one triglyph, just to get your health to that bare minimum that I personally like, the four cowards on your body, and then the bow, the Viper Jewelry, and then the sword and the belt or the hands I have personally, Oblivion Glyph, Poisons, and uh, yeah guys, that's about it. Well, let's look, you can see the other things I've tried. But uh, yeah guys, that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, I'm out.